Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is episode three of External Containment Bureau. We are embroiled in World War II, and we will get to that in a moment. Um, I feel like we gotta we gotta just talk for a little bit. I feel like I gotta get the the creative juices flowing. How's everybody did you doing? Just, did you say what? embroiled? No, like I don't think embroidery. No, no. You know, yeah. <laughs> No, I only ever say the right words, and I never say the wrong words. And I don't. Well, think I was going to commend you on said... already having your creative juices flowing with embroidered. <laughs> if you can create new words, what can't you do today? I no. can do anything. <laughs> Modern day Shakespeare over today. here. <laughs> hey, I challenge you to say you didn't understand what he's trying to say, though. So yeah, you got you get it. Yeah, you oh, get I it. Knew, we I got knew what it. you meant. Yeah. <laughs> What's the actual word? Em, em, embroiled. Em, embroiled. 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 Mm, I, I think, think you that mixed... means that. I think that means that you're you know, mixed uh, two words together. And your broiler. Yeah. 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 It is a same, reference to the same cooking. root, actually. But uh, yeah. <laughs> I think you mixed embroiled and bridled. Yeah. Bridled, maybe. That's what it sounds like. To me. Maybe I. Maybe I did. I, I agree with you. <laughs> I don't think I did. <laughs> I, I. It's often, an easy thing to do. They have very similar I, meanings or uses, at least. I often <clears throat> combine words uh, accidentally like that. Uh, <laughs> I think it's happened. It happens quite a lot, actually. Where <laughs> it's usually Johnny and Nick that are like, "Did you? <laughs> did you say that?" And I'm like, I'm "I did." It no, it's funny. It's. Uh, I don't know where it comes from. Uh, my mom does it too. And so I'm like, is it a genetic thing? Am I just real dumb? It's one that of those could two. Genetics. <laughs> that could also be genetics. <laughs> yeah. You know, on the subject of words we say wrong and moms, I have a friend whose mom always says, instead of saying gigantic, she says gigantic every single time. <laughs> the people correct her. She's, she's like, oh, right. Ready. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Oh, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. she'll say gigantic anyway. the next time. <laughs> it's, it's kind of so good. It's kind of cute, though. It's like endearing. It is kind it's of just like... Yeah, it's a little endearing. It's like yeah, I don't know gigantic. if it's... So, all right. I'm going to put out a crackpot theory real quick. <laughs> um, every, every half Asian person I've met <laughs> and listened to tends to have like a a weird not weird but like uh there's some similarity in the way we all speak and i don't know why that is but there also seems to be a similarity in the way we like mess up words hmm. like i don't know if you've ever had this experience like i do tend to like combine words like you're talking about or like sometimes my mouth just like stops forming the word <laughs> as i am saying it but i've heard other like half asian people of people yeah. of half asian descent yeah. do this you are about <laughs> as close to the line on eugenics theory as you can get without crossing all the way <laughs> so, over i just saying we have similar characteristics I, maybe it's something about our mouth shape or something i understand I'm exactly say. what you're saying the, the english the english just does not flow out the way that uh <laughs> i i have a wrench in your theory i'm okay. i'm 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 digging it the wrench is that my dad is the asian one and my mom is not Asian, and she is the, the primary caregiver who raised Nick me. Nick didn't say which half is the problem. Sure. Yeah, true. I didn't, I didn't even say it's necessarily a learned thing. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I've got uh, just a weird weird thing I, I've noticed. It's definitely, I, definitely not I, real. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Uh, it's probably not eugenics. Let's be clear. It's probably not some weird genetic <laughs> Straight. I think we can take out the probably and say it's not you. Uh, yeah, that... it's 100 percent. You're right. Yeah, let's be clear. Let's be clear. It's 100 percent. Not what Nick said, uh, <laughs> but it's a good theory. Nonetheless, Nick, um, I don't know. It's, it's just you know, what a it's great way to start a World War II era episode. You know? <laughs> oh, no. I'm trying right. to be on topic. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, well, on that, um, I, when, when we were, well, I was planning this and sitting down, I was like, alright, I was looking at these pre-written adventures and I was like, okay, I, I don't know if we're going to be able to make 
one of these pre-written adventures sort of span over four episodes because putting one of these into like a six to eight hour time slot seems like it would be uh, stretching in the worst possible ways. And so I was like, all right, let me try and see if I can find a couple that I think might, I might be able to fit into something that makes sense. And I, I found both of these and they both kind of had this sort of like time related aspect. And I thought that could be fun to, to explore. And so we started with uh, figure infinity or figure eight uh, the last two weeks. Uh, and, and this Paranormal mystery, paranormal phenomenon is called uh, Codename Operation Witch Elm. And I like that name. Uh, it's so really good, right? Good name. And it's spelled uh, W Y C H also, not like W I T C H. Excellent. Um, excellent uh, name for that, for sure. So uh, some, some uh, temporal energy uh, escaped in your last paranormal phenomena and was released and sent to the four of you back to 1943 England, where you now find yourselves in the countryside, uh, close to, close to Birmingham. Um, there's like a small village outside of Birmingham that you are, are, are near. And when you came to, you saw, uh, planes flying overhead planes obviously that are much older uh that started dropping uh bombs on the english countryside and i think we're just gonna pick it up right there like what as this happens as you're like trying to collect yourselves what do the four of you do where were we right before this before we like change uh, locations. Yeah, you were just kind of like, I don't know, all in the Hanging same. Out. Yeah, yeah, maybe in the same break room. Uh, your your lunch is all lined up that day. Hmm. I feel like the first thing we should do is check and see if there are more planes coming because I don't want to get bombed today. So if we look at like the sky, are all of the the planes gone or at least flying away from us? Yeah, yeah, they did the the run and they seem to be flying away. Let's let's say that. Nail's well. already running for cover. <laughs> <laughs> Just left everyone else behind. Like, nope. <laughs> Just look, he's already gone. <laughs> yeah, Drake has <laughs> not moved and is rummaging through his bag looking for any papers he might have related to World War II operations. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, I do you have an item. I think you 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 uh, you have your like ability, right? Mm-hmm. Which do you, is that what you're trying to use right now? No. Okay. All right. You're just looking for something. Uh, what uh, are you trying to? What is your intent to just find something? Are you trying to find any well, specific so one of the, information? One of the items that I have as a uh, member of the the records department is just mm-hmm. redacted. Uh, files and so since the last thing we were working on was temporal anomalies maybe i pulled something yeah. that would be related to temporal anomaly in world war ii sure sure um uh you know what i'm not even gonna make you roll um uh there is a record that you you grab and it says uh, operation witch elm and most of uh, like most ecb missions and records 90 percent of it is redacted um but you can start to pick up that the agents the ecb agents who were present during this operation and and eventually were able to solve and contain this operation uh the paranormal phenomenon uh they were saying strange things like they were from the future. Are you sharing the information with us? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, as I find the paper, I just start reading it. Like kind of, I, I feel like I have a tendency to like, as I find <laughs> different records, I just start reading them half out loud. Out loud. Yeah. We are definitely not supposed to hear some of these things. <laughs> Yeah, for sure not. 
Um, which is why they don't let me take the unredacted files out with me. Mm-hmm. Wait, so somebody else is already back here from our time? No, we are the we are the people. Oh, that's unfortunate. I thought we had friends. Could be, could be either. Could be both. Could be neither. Have I, I don't like the neither one because we are definitely here right now. How much I hate time travel. Oh, you're back. <laughs> Just run back in. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it seems like it's just, it's coming up all time for me. Uh, not liking it. Oops, all time. <laughs> oh, man. So, I think that maybe we either need to find out if there are other uh, operatives from the ECB here claiming to be from the future, or if we are the only ones, and that will tell us whether or not uh, we are the ones who directly solve whatever's happening. Yeah. Um, also, I'm not even going to try to ask when the ECB was established because I'm sure I'm no one knows and it's redacted or whatever. But was, did it exist? Okay. Oh well. Okay. Um. Cool. <laughs> Never mind. So we could just connect with the ECB and see. Should we look for a branch here in the English countryside? Do you think there is one? I think that during oh, there's this gotta time, be. the uh, the yeah the the branch here in England was the primary branch right up until the raids started in World War One, and then it moved to the United States. But it's still very active here. Do we have to walk all the way there? Hmm. Do, are there self-driving cars yet? There are barely driving cars. There aren't oh, even self-driving cars where we came from. They don't really work. No, mine works great. I can do so much stuff in the back seat while I'm going down the highway. How many pedestrians have you killed? Honestly, I can't tell you the number. Well, you know, she's not operating it. it, it, it is it really it's her It's not my them? fault. That's that not said court, at least. That is a joke. That is a joke. Responsibility falls on Your the Honor, I wasn't at the driver's <laughs> wheel. <laughs> the car was the registered to me. And I was in it. It's the car's fault. <laughs> Your Honor, I was in the back seat applying lipstick. I couldn't have killed that person. Uh, uh, as you're all discussing, like, should we? Where, where should we go? Um, you see, like, coming over the hill, uh, uh, an older gentleman wearing the uh, like military sergeant garb of of uh, an English, you know, commander. Oh yes, hello, hello, friends. I was told to meet you here. Well, we were expecting. Yes, yes, they told me uh, four agents would be uh, right in this spot at this time. Well, that's that considerate. Yes, uh, yeah, welcome. Uh, you can call me uh, uh, Lieutenant, uh, Sergeant Lieutenant uh, Chambers. I don't think that's a rank. Wait, is your first name Lieutenant? It is, uh, yes. Uh, my oh, parents okay. had a, a bit of a, um, a joke. Uh, they wanted me to uh, join the uh, Eng the uh, American army. Right, because it would be lieutenant if you were... Yes, yes. That, uh, that, that is, I was Britain. relentlessly mocked growing up as a child. They said, that's an Fair. American rank, you... Yankee. Yankee. That's what they would say. Probably. Yes. Cool. <laughs> well, I uh, suppose you're wondering why you're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah very should much. We, yeah, we would really should we be discussing it here, like or should know. we go wherever you came oh, from? No, no, we should be fine. He he pulls out uh like um it's like a cylindrical, <clears throat> completely smooth object. Uh, th th this uh, localizes a uh. Uh, a field uh, where noise does not pass in and out. We should be completely fine talking about this uh, in my presence. So, so the, oh, that's just fancy. A, it's a noise reduction barrier. It's a cone of silence. Does it work? Yeah, I mean, it's well, old. please, you can stand on the outside <laughs> and uh, test it if you want. Yeah, no, I, I know it. I know how it works. Actually, so it's, it's fine. 
You can turn it on. Uh, yes, uh, and he <laughs> awkwardly touches like a, a piece of it that kind of uh, d- presses into the the object, and this shimmering field surrounds the four of you. Well, uh, yes, there we go. Uh, it should be quite quite safe now to talk. Uh, well, <clears throat> about uh, two weeks ago, we lost contact with one of our agents. Uh, they were investigating reports of uh, a spate of, uh, we might call them plant-based anomalies here in the Hackley Woods. And he points to, uh, there's this giant forest next to this small village. Uh, there were reports of uh, four local boys that found our agent's body about four weeks after she came. Uh, sorry, about a week after she came. Uh, they said that she was stuck inside of a tree. As though the tree had grown around her. And post-mortem on the body, uh, revealed uh, that uh, she had died almost 18 months ago. Now, obviously, we're a bit preoccupied with the Blitz and the intelligence services, so we have free run uh, of this to solve it and contain it, hopefully without uh, the the English government getting too much in the way. However, uh, the more attention you draw to yourselves, the more that that might not be true. So you are to identify what the phenomenon is, figure out how to contain it, and figure out a way to keep both the small village unaware as well as the larger British government. Uh, do you have any questions? Could you just give us that timeline one more time? Uh, yes, so about two weeks ago, we sent an agent out here to investigate the plant-based anomalies, and then a week later, some local boys found her body. Uh, when we examined her corpse, it was shown that she had died 18 months ago, which obviously isn't true, as we sent her out only a couple weeks ago. Okay. That is strange. And you don't think it's related to any of the undead issues that were happening in Scotland like two years ago? We were investigating that as a potential source. However, with the addition of the plants and the local foliage, we don't believe it has any relation to that at all. That's fair. It's reasonable. Um, Um, Could this be the Queen's fault? I just don't trust her. It almost certainly is not. That's disappointing. I've been surprised once or twice before, so have at it, I say. Is she queen already? There is a queen, but not the queen that you're both thinking of. Yeah. Okay, thought so. Um, hey, I'm we're from the bad. future. I have to tell you this so that the report makes sense. <laughs> um, well, I'll certainly put that down, but there's absolutely no way you're from the future. Yeah, and you were supposed to say that. Cool. Are we wearing... <laughs> our modern day clothes <laughs> we look insane <laughs> i'm just wearing a brown suit i probably look fine <laughs> to be fair yeah i probably look semi-normal because i'm just wearing you know i'm still wearing the same incredibly oversized mm-hmm. lab coat which is not nothing new but uh yeah <laughs> you guys you guys are looking a little crazy <laughs> for this. Yeah, I would suggest uh, getting out of whatever you're wearing into something that might help you blend in a little bit more. Might be hard to uh, keep a low profile if you look like you're escaped from a mental ward. Is that the look we're going for here? Chevron is an all moods type of pattern. I don't know why you're saying that. (laughs) If you if you point us in the direction of a local clothier, we will make sure we blend in. Uh, yes, you, uh, you should be able to. Uh, that small village down there is uh, Birkinghamshire, and uh, it's right next to Hagley Woods, and uh, you should be able to uh, find everything you need there. And what is the and, uh, I, I believe that you were. The village? Uh, sorry, what was that? The, what is the population of the village? Sorry. Oh, uh, yes, uh, <laughs> Birkinghamshire is uh, about. Two, three hundred. It's not very large at all. Hmm. Uh, but uh, obviously, with it being so close to Hagley Woods, we're a little concerned about its safety. Yeah, and and as is obvious to you at this point, being Americans from the future, we do not have uh, 
money we can use to buy clothes. So you're going to provide us with a stipend to take care of all of our financial needs while we're here, right? We need uh, money for clothes, <laughs> well, food, uh, yeah, potentially lodging. Obviously, uh, do you have the forms for the requisite, uh, not only the request for the stipend, but also the currency transfer uh, forms uh, as well? Well, so I, I'll fill out a uh, retroactive requisitions form when we return to the future. So that, that'll that be taken care of. I'm from records. It's it's totally yeah, you board. probably have it already. I do have it. I just haven't no, filled it I out mean, yet. No, I mean, he probably has the filled out one already. Oh, yeah, maybe. Just check your check your documents, Ben. Uh, well, I will go back and check the documents, and um, I will contact you if I need anything else from you. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll be here or in the woods or dead, you know, or both. Yeah, usually both. Uh, I hope you do not die here in the woods. Uh, good luck. Uh, and um, please uh, reach out if you need anything else. <sighs> Man, that passion. Did he walk away yet? I know I'm still here, but I can leave if you if you yeah, need please me to. Yeah, please leave. We need to start. Uh, yeah, we need some privacy. All right, and he, for the month. Uh, he unpresses the button and can I starts walking away. He, before he walks away, I fill out like like it's like chicken scratch. It's not going to look like legible barely at all. But I fill out a really hasty requisitions form and hand it to him. Say so this is for the uh, the silence thing. Oh yes, thank you. I was I did completely spaced asking for that. Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, so cool, and I can I just like reach out and take it out of his hand. So, oh, oh, but... you want this? Oh, I thought you just meant to, to be able to use it the one time with me. Um, hmm. Uh, why don't I? I'm gonna roll. Uh, I'm gonna roll a dice. A uh, fortune roll. Uh, one dice for luck, and I'm gonna give you an advantage since you're from records. Uh, let me look over this. Uh, I unfortunately cannot part with this at this moment. Uh, however, I will go back and I will uh, look over this document and fill out any forms that I need to. And uh, should everything be tipped off shape, I will uh, have this thing mailed out to you and it will be me able to meet you here. Uh, unfortunately, though, I, I cannot part with this. Okay. All right, I'm going to go now. <laughs> As he's walking away, not yet out of your shot, but like almost there, Clarissa's gonna say, "Man, he should have filled out the big dummy form before talking to us, because this hair is modern, baby. I don't know what he's talking about." <laughs> I, I yeah. really, really want that silence cone thing. <laughs> just push it down uh, next time. We can just requisition one for you. Those are like, I just, that's like old tech. By the time we, can I mark two resonance and teleport it away from him? <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm assuming you want to do it without him uh, being aware yes yeah okay um absolutely absolutely you can um can i help with that action by telekinesis saying a small rock in his head to distract him <laughs> so please, please. an acorn and just bam. <laughs> right oh, he's Lord. so taken off guard the squirrels are going to war against us <laughs> The Germans have recruited the squirrels. <laughs> um, why don't you? Uh, here's what I was gonna say. I was gonna say um, that this position was dangerous, danger close, because you are literally just breaking a bureau directive by taking this thing from him. But I, I will say that with the addition of uh, marking the resonance from Clarissa and, and knocking the acorn into his head, we'll bump that position up to to just risky instead. Nice. Um, are you following all relevant bureau directives? I don't no. think so. I don't think so. Uh, do you think your background applies? Um, He's no. Some books about pickpocketing. Love it. No, <laughs> any my background gear, does, definitely any, doesn't. <laughs> any gear you think would help you with this? Uh, we can. Um, I might give you the dice because you filled out the uh, the start uh, of the. Um, the forms to to requisition this okay i'll give you a die and then you're using a paranormal <laughs> ability um so mark a two resonance and uh, make that roll got a two that's my high my high dice <laughs> oh no okay <laughs> um <laughs> Bad 
bad start. That is a bad start. I mean, you guys were Let's all get, rolling get... rocks yes last yesterday. Uh, which was yesterday for us because last week for the listeners. Um, had to stop at some point. Uh. <laughs> Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> I think this is maybe a loose end that you might have to either like figure out what to how to resolve this or not. Um I th- uh, you start pulling this thing out and uh Lieutenant Chambers turns around and he's like, "Well, what are you?" And that is when the acorn just goes straight through his forehead. <laughs> Rui is Clarissa went uh-huh. way too hard. Mm-hmm. And Sergeant Lieutenant Nails Chambers just throwing up just falls <laughs> down in front of you. <laughs> you've got the thing, but now you've got a dead high ranking ECB officer. Um God damn it, not again. <laughs> Pull this body out of here. <laughs> Right, I start, okay, I got it. I got it. I yeah, I, I start trying to like help manage the body. They look at Nail. Are you gonna throw up every time somebody dies or gets hurt? I don't do blood very well. I'm sorry. It is hilarious that you've been sent on field operations. <laughs> <laughs> I, like <clears throat> Big Mama starts putting like four stakes around the body and just like pulls out a remote, turns them on. That like laser lines are drawn between all of them. <laughs> and then he just the, like this like basically a sheet of laser just like goes down over the body and it just disappears as it goes through it. <laughs> uh, is that your uh, your department special ability? Sure. Okay. <laughs> All right. I mean, I like that because then you're getting rid of this loose end and 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 you don't have to. <laughs> you all see. Pick Mama set up these stakes around the body, and then a laser just disintegrates it into absolutely nothing. Nails actually, it's not technically disintegration. We don't actually know what this laser does. Oh, I love it! I love that he just made it. It's very helpful in that we don't really know where it goes, but it's gone, and that's all. That I love it. I love that even more. Uh, I'm assuming you took the uh, cone of silence away from him before you did that. As though. yeah, I mean, so, I'll. I'll, I'll Roll him over for any useful things. <laughs> I mean, kill this man was great well, for just, us. I do this more often. I think I Drake, John, I yeah, got, like yeah, he yeah. dies, and Drake is like, "Oh no, that that's definitely bad." And the whole time he's like just reaching for the cone. And taking it. <laughs> oh, I'm what like a shame. Pack. Yeah, no, this is terrible. It's like, oh no, the lasers warm up. <laughs> All the, all the money that you guys wanted is there as well too. Yeah. Well, ah, Big good, Mama's good, good. setting up. I like pick up his hand and like forge his signature on the requisition form to make sure all the paperwork is still in order. Uh, what a soldier! <laughs> Salute him as he disappears. <laughs> Man, it's sad that he's going away because now I can't medium to him. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Who knows where he'll go? Oh well. Probably well, a better I'll meet place. one day in the Great Plains. Yeah. Oh. Like Do you think he teleports you to Montana? <laughs> <laughs> that would be awful. I would have wished that upon my worst enemy or my best friend. What about Man. your worst friend? Probably my worst friend. But she is dead, so she's already there. <laughs> <She's>... <laughs> I... I... Dude. I think now, I think now, at like right in Indiana Jones, they have that giant warehouse full of like cultic paranormal stuff. I think the ECB just sends that stuff to Montana. Like Montana is just their paranormal. <laughs> yeah, their word. It's not because no one warehouse. goes to Montana. It's just it just it's falls just, out of the sky. It's, it's just, just Montana. Wherever. No one's gonna <laughs> find it. <laughs> The warehouse thirteen. Just I was just Montana. gonna say warehouse thirteen, <laughs> yeah, 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 warehouse 13 yeah, yeah. but it's just Montana. <laughs> yeah, there's no, there's no building. It's just yeah. it's similar just to Montana. warehouse thirteen. Montana moves every couple of centuries. <laughs> <laughs> just... <laughs> um, 
All right, you've got the you've got the cone of silence. You've got your money. Uh, you have your mission. Uh, you have a dead ECB ranking officer. Um, uh, we don't have him anymore. Yeah, yeah, he, <laughs> he's somewhere. Um, it, this is an eight segment uh, mission clock. So I okay. pick up my my stakes. <clears throat> well, what do you want to do next? Oh, can can we say I get I just took his whole pack? Is there anything else useful in there? <clears throat> um, his uh, like badge it's ID all biscuits. <laughs> I mean, at least it's we have just, a snack. I guess <laughs> it's uh, it's biscuits and uh, like loose leaf tea. <laughs> and scones. That's awful. Um, no, no firearms. No, his uh, he, well, mm-hmm. well, let's roll a fortune roll. Uh, sure. And he is a part of the military, so uh, I'm going to give you another dice for an advantage on that. Uh, yeah, there is a Walther P uh, in his pack. Um, nice. And uh, his his like military ID is there as well, too, uh, except it might be a little tricky because it has a picture of him. Um so, you know. Yeah. I don't think military IDs had pictures on them in the 40s. Well, in uh, this timeline, they do. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> don't worry. There's that. I, I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> pull, so, it would have just been like laminated on there, at, you know, 40s technology. Mm-hmm. I just Easy. take out a lighter, <laughs> heat it until it loosens, slip out the picture conveniently have several photos of myself in multiple different outfits <laughs> pull out one pull it, push it in <laughs> heat it up again press it and okay. back. Uh, i think i'm gonna need a roll for this uh totally to fair. see how to see how how good this this fake id is going to work um are you following all bureau directives no. i'm trying not to make any sort of like i'm just trying to get what i need and and move on through without anyone questioning me. I would say, like he he's not the one who killed this guy, so he's he is following bureau directives, trying to. <laughs> hey, I cleaned up the body. Out. I'm using his identity because it's already set yeah. up. Obfuscation. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, All the right, obfuscation okay. is in service of continuing the mission. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back to this again. All right, take the die for following the bureau directives. Uh, I. I, I'm not even going to ask you about your background. I think that is very clear that your background applies uh, in this uh, situation for sure. Unless you are like, no, it doesn't. But well, no, hacking is mostly like yeah. social engineering. So like, yeah. this is this is more hacking. Hacking. Lambda, This like, is what you do. Yeah, yeah. I no, really want why... everyone to understand by the end of this mini campaign that hacking is like not sitting at a computer with like cool music playing and like a bunch of text running down the screen. It's mostly boring stuff like messing with IDs and. <laughs> Yeah, stealing passwords and <laughs> yeah, hitting yeah, enter. <laughs> click, clack, click, clack. I'm in. I'm in. Yeah, <laughs> buying mechanical keyboards. You, uh, I'll, how about this? I'll give you the die. I'll give you. Possible. I'll give you the die for the background. But yeah, when you say, put... I'll accept no aspersions on mechanical keyboards. <laughs> 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 uh, when you uh, when you put your ID into the slot where his ID was, I need you to say, "I'm in." <laughs> yeah, I put it. I'm putting the picture in, and I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> and I was like, what? Are you, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, sorry, um, just, just took, took any, any gear you think is going to be helpful that you? My uh, lighter? I I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Okay. Don't, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's take a dive for that. Uh, and then I don't think you're using a supernatural paranormal power. So uh, I don't think telepathy is going to help me here. So not really. So go ahead and roll three <laughs> die. Tell me what the highest is. <laughs> Five. Five. All right. Um, I'm going to start a clock. Uh, That clock is a six segment clock uh, called uh, uh, your fake ID is found out. (laughs) Great name. Very clear. Yeah, I I like to make it uh, understandable for my players. What's going to happen when the clock is filled up? (laughs) <laughs> uh but for for now uh you you're pretty certain that that this is going to hold up you know continued use of it might cause somebody to to look a little bit closer at it um but 
you're like, all right, I think I can get a couple few uses out of this. Nice. <clears throat> so, um, should we take the we money and stuff he gave us and get uh, era appropriate clothing? Probably. We if all just we turn to, to look at Clarissa. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? I look great. You do. No, you, Clarissa, you look beautiful. Uh, but we need you to look like it, it's 1943. That's all. To look poor? No. I'm get paid for this. There were, there were rich people in 1943. There, <laughs> there are rich people here. You'll look like a rich person now, just not a rich person in, and he looks you up and down, 1984. <laughs> yeah, you listen here. <laughs> this is 2023 fashion and because you don't understand me does not mean you can take out your anger on me let's go get the I damn clothes so I can figure out what I'm doing storm <laughs> off <laughs> yeah and she storms <laughs> off to the village as we start following I like lean over to nail like, what did I say <laughs> I don't know I don't get it <laughs> Big Mama steps forward, just like, you know, it's probably pretty much the same rich people, you know? I mean, it doesn't really change that often. Yeah. You're not wrong. Yeah. Our rich people are these rich people's kids. That's all. Yeah. Uh. You. Where is. Find your... <laughs> Where's the nearest, um, well dressed person store in this quaint village of 200 people? <laughs> Yeah, it might come as a surprise that uh, that is not something that's going to be easy to find. <laughs> um, but like y you do, you you see um, you see somebody who's not wearing older clothes. Like their clothes look maybe to Clarissa, it's not like the height of fashion and luxury, but it doesn't look terrible. And as you kind of look around. That might be the best you're going to do. Do I have to take this person's clothes? Am I going to push them over? <laughs> I, rob them? I mean, you can. You certainly <laughs> could. Uh, uh, find another this. acorn. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a it's a woman. Um, she's wearing like a, a really well pressed dress um, and really like delicate and intricate pattern. OK. We're going to approach this woman delicately yeah. and kindly. Yes. And ready an acorn just in case. Um, Ma'am, I, I hope this doesn't come off as, as strange, but you just look so marvelous. Where did you find your dressings? Oh my God, I love your accent. Where are you from? New Jersey. You're from America. Yeah, it was a long boat plane train ride. Ah, yes, the boat plane train, yes. <laughs> I've uh, taken it many of times to New York. Isn't it lovely and, uh, this time of year? It, Seeing the dolphins? Uh, it's, it's great. Wonderful. Flying, the dolphins flying in the clouds is just one of my favorite it's, things. It's ever. lovely. Um... No, I start uh, looking through so my files for shared psychosis, 1943. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, th thank you so much for, for complimenting my dress. Uh, yes, uh, I've actually uh, uh, made this. I, I'm a seamstress, uh, the only seamstress here in uh, Birkinghamshire. Um, I hope to make it to Birmingham one day to, to be a, a fashion person. I hope my, I have a great opportunity for you. So, I, back where I'm from, I run a small-time TV show that's seen by dozens of people nationally. And I think I could give you a really great opportunity here to expose your work by giving me a dress. Oh we can God. also pay you for it. I'm just throwing oh. it out there. Um, <laughs> well, um, why don't we make a roll... Uh, are you following all Bira directives? I think, yeah. I think you haven't mentioned the Bira at all. Um, uh, except that TV doesn't exist yet. <laughs> yes, it does. It is widely uh, used by civilians, I should say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> um, TV. The, the, I know that the uh, military uses that and the government does. What? So y your viewers are 
in a government? Oh, no. So when I say TV, I mean something entirely different. It's called train viewing. So <laughs> I stand on the side of the track and the people on the train watch me. It's very innovative. It's going to take off soon, I promise. That explains why only about a dozen people would see this at a time. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it's massive watch. viewership at this point. Yeah, and I really just want to lock in. We will pay you. We will also pay you. So. I understand. Okay. Uh, take the die for following all relevant bureau directives. Uh, I will give you the die, too, for your background as a medium <laughs> and TV medium. I'll say, even say be more specific TV medium. Uh, and then you've got money, so I think you have relevant gear that works. Uh, so unless you want to use uh, someone else to use a paranormal power, uh, I think uh, you can go ahead and roll three dice. Okay. That was a one, a three, and a five. Okay. So we'll take the five. Yeah. Um, I am going to do this. I'm going to change that clock I made just a little bit. Uh, I think I'm going to make it a little bit more general. Uh, actually, you know what? I'll start a se I'll start a second clock because this is a bit more specific. Um, this clock is going to be like your uh, temporal either idiosyncrasies make you discover to somebody not from this time. Uh, we'll say Birkinghamshire discovers of discovers time travelers <laughs> and Birkinghamshire is what happens when you put me to improv a small town in the English countryside really that's what happens when you task the British with making small towns in the countryside I don't it's know true. what it's true um, I will also make this a six segment clock as well and uh she uh, looks at you and she's like, um, all right, Th that's fine. Yes. Uh, as long as you can pay me, I'm not quite sure about this tr train vision thing. It sounds completely made up, but uh, if you're willing to pay, I certainly can provide uh, the four of you with some clothes. I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. I think all four of us would like some clothes. That would be great. Oh, <laughs> Do you have anything uh, in a uh, for for a fifteen year old boy? Um, about I, I can make, make you make some. It? Okay. Yes. Yes. Also, you're a fifteen year old man in this time. <laughs> yeah, don't speak too loud. They might take your butt to war. <laughs> um, uh, this uh, seamstress is able to provide the four of you with period accurate clothes i have though marked two segments on the birkinghamshire discovers time travelers clock ma'am thank you so much we're gonna go gallivant around town now in our new fashions uh please please tell them that uh rory uh, fiddle the bottoms is the one that made them <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you're the Rory Fiddlebottoms? I am. Have you heard of me? No, but thank you for telling me your name. <laughs> it was absolutely my pleasure. Rory Fiddlebottoms, descendant of Rory, the male person. <laughs> That's <A> Rory. Rory. <laughs> Rory. <laughs> A modernization of the name, if you will. Sure, yes. That when Completely when uh, when the fiddle bottoms moved to, to America they had to take a new first yeah, name. Yeah, because <laughs> <Amerisized. laughs> yeah, they all had the same <laughs> the same first name instead of you know the same last name. Look, Rari's are very blue jeans. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh where are you going? What are you doing? Um we probably well. I have his pack, so I definitely have like the dossier. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. we find the kids and ask them for any more information. Where they, where it was, really, how to get there. I like that. That's a good idea. Yeah, I can approach them as a fellow youth. Again, you're like you're like a grown man here. I wonder. I actually wonder what the draft age was. Sorry. Eight. 
probably 13 <laughs> honestly <laughs> probably 13 at that time no well, people were getting turned 17 year olds were getting turned away when they were found out for being 17 so Oh. Based on Chronicles of Narnia, wasn't that a main plot point that Peter might have gotten drafted? He was like no. right at the no. Okay, never mind. I thought it was a plot point, but we'll debate that some other time. I can, we can talk about that I, often. I've read those books more times than most people have read anything, so I, I can. <laughs> Narnia is a floor as a C.S. Lewis story. <laughs> you will not challenge him on this for a moment. <laughs> My college was... offered a major in C.S. Lewis, and I took all... I did not major in C.S. Lewis, but I took all of those wow. courses, so... Oh, dude, at that point, really... you might as well just do a major in C.S. Lewis. Yeah. Yeah, well, I majored in other bullshit. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, 18 to 41. Oh, okay. Mm. okay. Uh, interesting. Um, yeah, so you're just walking around town looking looking for kids. No, we have like I'm assuming there was some like information on their identities in yeah, yeah, in, yeah, like, yeah. the files uh, that I took from one of the one of the uh, kids is named Bob Payne. Hey, the D- Bob Payne, just Bob Payne, Ro- Robert okay. Robert Payne. I had a uh, okay, Robert P A Y N E or P A I N P A Y N E. Oh, thank God. I was worried this was a long line of torturers we'd be talking to. I mean, some might be. But, uh, hey, Robert. <laughs> Robert, I just, it's, he's in the, he's in the street playing yeah, kick rock. Uh, I don't know. Kick, kick rock. Yeah, they're, they're kicking a rock around. I have no idea Again, what children do. It's did. not the Great Depression. <laughs> it's just 120 <laughs> years ago. The British are fascinating. <laughs> Sorry, 80 years ago. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. They're playing hoop stick. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Whatever. you're Something. kicking rocks, not getting dental care, doing what British people do. <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, and I and I think uh, Nail, you you said you wanted to try and broach him as a, as a fellow youth. I'm like, fellow that's youth. that's Robert right over there. <laughs> go, go get him now. All right. Okay. I think I think I got this. Oi, governor. <laughs> Oh, immediately failed. Oh, immediately failed. <laughs> I almost just spit all, my coffee out. <laughs> all, all of all of the kids turn around and and look at you with a look in their eyes and go, "Boy, governor, <laughs> what's all this then about some old hag stuck in a tree?" Uh, you know, Ace. We're just exploring the forest. You know, <laughs> found found that old bird stuck in a tree. Was there anything odd about it? Uh, why don't you roll a uh, let's let's look for a clue? Yeah. All right. Did you ask if there was anything <laughs> odd about the woman stuck in a tree? <laughs> he did. He did I do just, that. I, I, look, I'm connecting with the youths, <laughs> these street urchins. Yeah, you've gotta be casual. <laughs> gotta keep it cool. I can't just go directly into. <laughs> did you hear anything? Did you smell anything? Do you uh, smell the woman right. in the tree? <laughs> Did you <laughs> taste her? Uh, I think you are at this point still following all relevant beer directives. Mm. So take a dive yes. for that. Uh, do you think your background as a claims adjuster helps you in this at all? Yeah. I have to pretend to be someone else to get the truth out of people uh-huh. to approve okay. insurance claims. <sighs> I don't. Yes, it is. I, uh... <laughs> or it's so, it is, so it is, it is relevant because they do need to collect claim. a lot of information. But... Yeah. They collect information. Yeah. I, I would imagine you've talked to kids as well too. There might have been some yeah. times you've had to uh, spoken to a child about an event <laughs> to get more information about it. Uh, I will let you have that dice. Uh, any gear or relevant requisitions? I might be convinced to say that being fifteen is a relevant gear slash requisition. Yeah, I'm still fifteen. I'm trapped in the body <laughs> yeah. of a fifteen year old. <laughs> um, so, and then, do you have a, a paranormal power you want to use? Um, not yet. I'm going to hold off on using okay. my retrocognition. Okay. So then, three dice. Three dice. Mm-hmm. Six six three. Whoa, Ooh. two sixes. That's two sixes. critical. Um, 
you have any ideas about what you want that additional benefit to be. Uh, otherwise, uh, I can I can come up with something. Is that our uh, first critical? Uh, yeah. That is not. I, uh, no, oh. uh, someone else rolled another. Critical. I think Gus rolled a critical oh. in the first episode. Yeah. Next time we have a group uh, roll, I think it's Gus's deal. Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> Uh, extra benefit would I um, would want eerily precise directions to where we're going. <laughs> He's like, all right, well, there's a rock, <laughs> sixteen I, I, trees, yeah, <laughs> degrees, <laughs> longitude, yeah. and latitude. <laughs> I'm asking him if he's brave enough to to like want to take us to the tree directly take after it. he tells us what he knows. Yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um. Uh, <laughs> Bob looks at you for a second. Goes, I mean, other than the the bird just being stuck in the tree, stranger than that. Yeah, I mean, it was probably the witch of the Hagley Wood. What do you mean, the witch? Yeah, ain't never heard of the witch, the Hagley Wood. No, we're from uh, from North London, from Brighton. We haven't heard of any of this. Yeah, it sounded like someone from North London. <laughs> I have a very rare condition. It goes in and out, okay? All right. Well, uh, she's a witch, yeah, you see? And uh, rumor is, if you go into the Hagley Wood, don't offer her your uh, a gift to her. She just sticks you right in the tree. Do you want to see it? Yeah. You want to see the body? <laughs> All right. He leans past you. What about them? Saw you talking to them earlier. Yeah. They coming too? Mine. Yeah. We'll throw in a, a pound for you if you if you let them come with. All right. I'll do it for a pound. Yeah. All right. I'll take you there. Just look at. At Blake, give give him give him a give him a pound. Uh, after after we arrive, and I I look at now, filled out the appropriate paperwork. <laughs> it was just like, I oh, mean, no, I promise I'll take you there. I'm a gub good for my word. See, gov, but come on, let me see that pan first. I give, I him, give him a pound. I oh, that's good. <laughs> Whatever, <Yeah>. dude. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I'll take the four of you. Just uh, don't blame me if you get find yourself stuck inside a tree. You got a gift for the witch? The, does money work? I don't know. Witch don't care about money. Oh, mm. I've got gifts. Don't worry. <laughs> All right, all right, all right, I'll take you, I'll take you. Mm. <clears throat> you should be careful, too. I pulled that off of a dead man, and I just keep my walk away. <laughs> <I> just... <laughs> Go to continue. Uh, and uh, Bob Payne leads you into the forest. <laughs> Bob Payne. Bob Payne. Just... Ripping me out every single time. <laughs> Robert Payne. <laughs> Lee See, that's, 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 that works better. <laughs> it's called Bob Payne in the. I know. Okay, all right, fine. <laughs> I'm just reading it. Um. Uh, he leads you into the forest, uh, and when you get to the edge of the forest, uh, it is very like ominous. It's it's very dark. All the branches are like. Uh, cracked and and ragged, and there's just like a sense of unease over the whole thing. This feels just no. like home <laughs> in North London, yeah? yeah. Oh no, we're not from the same place. I'm just I'm the kid's friend. I. He's not looking at the four of you like. 
how did these four meet each other? <laughs> well, the rest of us are from from Essex. Oh yeah, I hear, I hear the Essex. Yeah, 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 yeah. Her. Um, I just want to explain. So Big Molly is not wearing the oversized lab coat anymore, mm -hmm. and you realize just how like diminutive his figure is, even more so than what probably seemed under the coat. Uh, because now you realize he is carrying like multiple satchels and like just like basically like a utility. He's just got like a bunch of stuff on him. Um, <laughs> so just moving on from that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but eventually he leads you to the area where this agent's body is. And it's it's grotesque. Uh, it's it, like, you can't even identify who this agent was really. Their form is just so enveloped in the stump of this tree that you, you can't even really pick up any identification on them at all. Um, and, uh, Robert Payne goes, all right, there, there you go. That's where we found her. At least I think it's a her. Really hard to tell. I wonder if it's. Hey, go home. Yeah. All right. See you later. I'm gonna go kick Bye. a rock around. <laughs> it's a good so activity. Her, her body is like fused with the tree still. Yeah. Um, could I? Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, could I approach the tree and and use the retrocognition? Can I do something scarier first and try Ooh. to telepathy with her? Ooh. Oh, yes. oh, 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 no. I just hear screaming. I'm assuming you are trying to find some sort of clue by doing this. Yeah, we are. We, yeah, yeah, that's what we're doing. Okay. Um, uh, are you following all relevant? Uh, well, I would say your position is, is risky. Uh, seems like a pretty risky thing to uh, try and communicate with a, a person stuck inside of a tree. Um, are you following all relevant bureau directives? I think, yeah, probably. Yeah. Mm. Um, uh, do uh, sorry. Uh, does your background? Do you think your background uh, applies in this situation? I've died before. <laughs> Put the guiding expertise of a small time medium, perhaps. Hacking <laughs> background. No, no, it doesn't. Yeah, no. Uh, do you have any relevant gear or anything? Any requisitions? It's my powers. It's my, my brain. Yeah. My big old brain. So you, you get definitely get the paranormal thing, um, and then you got the relevant bureau directives die. So go ahead and roll those two dice. Let's see what we get. Um, I got a two. Is the highest? As a one and a two. Oh, oh no! Yikes. Um, <laughs> I do just hear that. screaming. <laughs> <laughs> An acorn just right through Big Mom's. <laughs> oh, come on, not again. <laughs> um. You connect with the mind uh, of this person inside of the tree for a moment, Big Mama. And yeah, you just hear. <gasps> mm. And as that sort of psychic resonance cascades over you, the rest of you see and feel something. It is though the forest itself is moving. The trees start shifting. The pathways start disappearing. And as this happens, uh, I'm going to do, let's do this. I'm going to roll a die. Um, uh, Drake is a one and a two. Clarissa is a, four, a three and a four. And Nail is a five and a six. Um. As the trees start shifting and um, the pathways start changing, 
you find yourselves cut off and split in half. Drake and Big Mama, you are still by this tree where the agent is. Uh, is. Uh, but Clarissa and Nail, you find yourselves no longer with Drake and Big Mama. You find yourselves in the middle of a forest with no apparent way out. And I'm going to mark a three. Uh, I think I can mark three. Let me double check. I'm going to be marking something on the mission clock, but I just need to figure out how much I can mark. I think it's three. You could mark glass. I could mark glass. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not going to. It's one rule. <laughs> it was a... So I, I told you it was risky, though, so that's two. Okay. That's two. Yep. That's on the eight-segment clock, right? And it's on the eight-segment clock uh, okay. for the mission clock, which, again, uh, to remind you, uh, does not necessarily mean that it's a failure once that is filled up. It just means that the situation is rather dire, uh, and the Bureau will have to put considerable resources to obfuscating this paranormal phenomenon. Um. So they are, are they like totally cut off? Like, can we see them or are like mm -mm. just physically cut off or? Do you do not see them anymore? Okay. Um, Clarissa is going to go through her, her purse, which she still has. It's a Michael Kors. Mm -hmm. You can't leave that behind. Even if you're trying no, to blend no. in. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so she starts digging through it, thinking about uh, the kid talked about giving a gift to the witch. So she pulls oh. out uh, her like tarot deck and starts shuffling oh, yeah. through cards and pulls out um, the lovers and places it on the ground and says, you know, baby, you're not going to be friends. We don't have to do this. See, it says it says our energies are intertwined. We could be we can make this work. I really like this a lot. Uh, it feels like a role to me. Um... Are you following all relevant period? Well, first off, I think uh, I think this is actually a danger close position because you have mm -hmm. no idea what what you're contacting, uh, and that is very dangerous. Um, but I I do think you're following all the relevant bureau directives, uh, mm -hmm. so I'll give you that dice. I I definitely think your background applies in this situation for sure. Um, and you've got your tarot card deck, so uh, you can go ahead and take another die for irrelevant gear or requisitions. And then do you want to use a paranormal power? Yeah. Could I use telekinesis to yeah. just hold the card up so my hands are up so that oh. I am showing no danger? I'm not going to make yeah. a move. I love that a lot. Yes. Four dice. Okay. <laughs> That is a one, two threes, and a five. Oh, oh my okay. god. That was close. <laughs> that was really that was really close. Uh it is a mixed success. Um, so there is still a consequence, but you do do it. Um what is is your intent just to have whatever this this energy is to to back down? Are you asking it for something? Um to back down, maybe to show itself so we can have a conversation. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> um, you... see the leaves start to coalesce into a form uh, a very slender lithe form and it reaches its hand out and the leaves encompass the the lover's card and then the the wind that you didn't even really notice was picking up starts to die down as this thing is holding the lover's card and just looking at you and nail. Yeah, baby. See, we can be friends. We don't have to do all the theatrics. Do you have a name? Um, 
<sighs> Here, wait. Hey. If you can't talk, I got a Ouija board. We could. <laughs> <laughs> it 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 gestures uh, to everything. Oh, you're the forest. See, I like that. I like that you're a big, all-encompassing ecosystem that's friendly and takes care of the creatures inside of you. That's very motherly. I do that, too. I know where you're coming from. Are you scared? Is that why you're doing this? It... gets um, aggravated by that question a little bit. It, it, the wind starts to to pick up again, and um, the consequence, which I was about to get to, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it now. Uh, I am going to mark. Uh, what was that? I said it was a. Oh, I said it was a danger close. Um. So I'm gonna mark uh, three. Uh, actually, no, I'm going to. Yeah, I think that makes the most sense. I'm going to mark three on the mission clock. And it it points uh, in a direction. It's sort of like the the on the other side of Hagley Woods uh, from Birkinghamshire. So something's wrong there. Do you want me to go see if I can figure that out for you? It points again and then dissipates. Okay, Nail, we're going on a field trip. Let's go. <laughs> Nail's just like, uh, okay, we'll follow the leaves. You know, there's a good pun hidden somewhere in here, but I'm not quite clever enough to come up with it. I'll, I'll pass that to you, young, and we'll figure it out. <laughs> Um, you guys continue on your way. Uh, uh, Lake and Big Mama, what are you doing? Oh, Making like a tree me? and leaving, leafing. <laughs> Dang it, I just <laughs> thought of it. <laughs> did, uh, did any of our directive include retrieving the other agent's body? Um, it, it can. Uh, that might be a part of obfuscating, right? Uh, yeah. Getting rid of this body. No, the part of the woods that that Big Mama and I are in, do we have mm -hmm. access to that particular tree or You do still, yep. Yep. Okay. I am going to try to teleport the body out of the tree. Hmm, I like that a lot. Um I do think this is a two two resonance use. Mm -hmm. Um yep. and we need to make an action roll for it. Um I think you're following beer directives. Uh I don't know if your background comes into play no, uh, or, no. or gear, but you certainly have the paranormal uh, dice. So I think two dice. Okay. Actually, I'm going to roll not the same dice I did last time because they failed me. Okay. Six. Okay, great. The other one was um, a one, and that's the one I saw first. It's hard to get really nervous. Like, oh, but, no. Uh, there, you reach out and you touch the, the small parts of the body that are, are visible outside of the tree. And then there's uh, holes where the body was and the body is now outside of the tree next to uh, you and Big Mama. Uh, it is at this point, too, you don't have a lot of time to respond because you hear the sound of villagers walking towards you. They're shouting, and in the distance, you can see them carrying torches with them. Um, okay. Pick up the body. And I think, I think that I could do this without, with only two, two more resonance. Can I teleport mm. me and Big Mama and the body? Because I can carry the body. Oh, so I think yeah. if I'm teleporting myself, it only costs one extra resonance to teleport Big Mama as well. Yeah, I, I, I like that. I like that. Okay, uh, I'm where are you planning us. to go? Uh, because the villagers are coming from the direction of the village, uh, as far deeper into the woods as I can see. Okay, sure. Okay. Um, uh, let's. I think it's still two dice. Then, mm -hmm. um, yeah. 
So roll the two dice and let's see what okay. happens. Uh, it's a, I'd say it's a risky uh, thing that you're doing, but cool. Double sixes. Hey, oh, look at that. Um, what what sort of additional benefit do you want? Uh, if um, not, I can kind of I can I, I've got some things, but if you can think of something, I'm I'm happy to to roll with that. I wonder if maybe maybe it's like a very rare thing that like I'm not even used to have happening. I, like I can't make this happen, but in a split mm. moment, I have a sense of where Clarissa and Nail are and can teleport to rejoin the two of them. Hmm. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, yeah, I like that a lot. Uh, you pick up the body, put your hand on big mama and, uh, as you are in the process of teleporting uh, is when this group comes in. You can see that they have uh, torches. And the last thing that you hear before you teleport out, no one sees you, by the way, too, uh, is uh, one of them shouts, we have to find who stuck Bob in that tree. And then you blink out of existence. And not Bobby, not Robert Payne, uh, Bobby. Clarissa Robert Payne. and and Nail, you are have been you know traveling for a little bit through the forest and you come to the edge of it on the other side of the, the Hagley Woods and where you're expecting just sort of like rolling hills and countryside is not there is a. Uh, well, to be honest, it kind of looks like a, a training ground. There are buildings and uh, whatnot, and that is when Poop, Drake, and Big Mama and this body appear next to you. Poop. Oh, you got the body out of the tree. That's dark. Okay. Well, I, I, I think it was darker that she was screaming either. when she was in the tree, but it's now just a corpse. Oh, yeah, oh. give her some sort of peace. See Nails just trying to hold him back and throw up. Just <laughs> Oh, also <laughs> to add to the horribleness, I think that kid, Bobby, uh, got uh, put into yeah. a tree. Oh, no more kicking rocks for him. Nails yeah, throws, no. up, <laughs> throws up the news of Bobby in the tree. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so, should I... Uh, Get rid of this. I motion to the body. Do we have oh, is there anything useful on her or like identify? Yeah, I was gonna say we should Sorry. examine the body. I, not not in the same way that I turned over the lieutenant. I am looking for clues <laughs> yeah. on yeah. her person. Um, go ahead and uh, yeah, let's make a roll. Um, so are you following all relevant bureau directives? Uh, I, I think so for sure. Um. <laughs> Background hacker hacker background applies in this. Uh, in particular, I'm just looking for clues and sure. Not really. Uh, uh, and then any relevant gear you think? Yeah, like uh, like some prodding sticks and sure, some okay. normal yeah. like you know magnifying glass that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, all right. Um, and then are, are you using a power or no? Not again. No, I refuse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, thank you. So, uh, uh, two, two, two dice. Easy. Five. Okay. Um, uh, you are poking and prodding around this body and you see, uh under like the bottom left of this agent's shirt you kind of lift up the shirt a little bit and where you're expecting skin you don't see skin you see mushrooms and fungus sprouting out of her belly and uh well, and some of the spores get on you and start burrowing <laughs> under your fingernails. Oh. Uh, that doesn't look good. I take out a pliers and I rip my fingernails off. 
<laughs> oh no. Wow. Um I mean, I think this is a very dangerous position. Uh do do you think that um uh you're you're following all the relevant bureau directives? I'm trying not to be infected by something. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Uh background comes in play here. I haven't ripped off my fingernail before, so I don't think <laughs> as a hacker that probably doesn't yeah. come up that often uh relevant gear i'll, I'll give you um i'm sure you've got some some pliers or something I want a first um, aid kit yeah. yeah 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 so uh gear um and then oh man uh and then uh are you using a supernatural power paranormal power um I think I will. I'm going okay. to connect to uh, Drake's mind uh, and just try to like exist more on his side of that connection than my own to cut as much of the oh, pain. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, like a uh, like a psychic uh, like thing that you chomp on, essentially. To like, yeah, essentially. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I get you. Yeah, yeah, that's fun. Yeah. Um, you realize pretty quickly that you you need to split your focus maybe a little more than you thought because I'm just vigorously taking notes, and so if you try to stay on my side of the connection, you just see this notebook. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's perfect. It's better than seeing. My... Um, I like that. Go ahead and roll roll three dice. Critical success. Hey. Hey. Three and two sixes. Um, I am going to then give you a clue. How about that? Um, make it uh, far more explicit with the clue that you have found. Um, which is like as you're you're taking, as you're chopping these fingernails off, um, the 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 nail and like the tips that you cut off fall to the ground, and you can already see that they were starting to uh be subject to necrosis. It's like dead flesh. I'm like, ch ch like just dumping, like rubbing alcohol over my uh -huh. hands. I'm yep. taking out like antifungal like powders and just yep. like everything I got. <laughs> that is, yeah. So uh, the the clue that you have found is that these these fungus uh, that the wood seems to be using uh, causes uh, necrosis, fast necrosis. Mm. Oh, that's why she died 18 months ago. Seemed like she did, yeah. Because, ow, because uh, she uh, is being eaten by the mushrooms. Oh, what if the mushrooms... I can tell y'all that we saw a thing in the forest, uh, like some leaf apparition, if you will, told us to come over here. Um, like a forest spirit? Kinda so. like a twink made of leaves. <laughs> I feel like I've seen that that's before. a traditional monster, the, the leaf twink. Yeah, yeah, leaf twink. I feel like we've Sounded seen one funny. of these before. You seen one? No, no, no. Just like the bureau in general. Like I swear, oh, I read yeah. something about a leaf twink. It's it's come up <laughs> multiple times. I think I've ran into one before. So it sounds very familiar. Yeah, I. So this is actually a fun moment. Real quick, uh, so I marked my entire resonance track, oh, so fine. I get a Ooh, new paranormal a new... ability. Yeah, you do. Uh, yeah, then I'm gonna take uh, shape shifting. That was Love it. what I wanted to choose. Ooh. So I want to just be like, yeah, I've seen a leaf twink. It looks like this, and just turn into. <laughs> 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 Hey, you! Uh, you better get my fucking card back. Uh, you no, stole it's, my stuff. It's still, still me. It's yeah, it's still oh, Jake. Sorry, Jake. that was just he spooked me. That was a new one. Uh. Okay. Well, that was cool. Can you just do that now? Uh, I think so. Yeah. It just kind of. I don't know. I felt like I could. Yeah, you're messing with your your physical space. When you're over your teleporting, probably makes sense that now you're a little bit more malleable. 
blood yeah. just falling off my hands as I <laughs> motion. <laughs> um, what do you want to do now? This uh, this so like area is in front of you. Military base in front of us. I mean, you can explore and and kind of figure out what uh what it is. I immediately I'm going to assume and I'm saying this out loud. Uh I'm immediately going to assume that the military here is experimenting with some sort of super fungus as a bioweapon and uh the forest is infected with it and that's why it's pissed. That makes mm. sense. It did seem very angry. It does make sense. Because why would the forest spirit not kill us immediately if it was just killing people? And why would the tree have grown around this person if it was this person was already going to die from the fungus if they were like indeed working together it doesn't make any sense it seems more like containment like something we would do speaking of which uh i'm gonna like put out the the laser like stakes again but i'm gonna put it <laughs> wide enough that it like also is encompassing the mushrooms that were like growing out of my yeah, fallen yeah, yeah. nails yeah, yeah and uh yeah, and get send it wherever it goes. <laughs> Where, Montana. 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 Montana is not going to have a Man, good time. <laughs> there's some poor farmer out there whose body just could be wildly messed up now. <laughs> Do we have the form for that? The messed up farmer clause? No, that's the great thing about this. I, I felt one form, and as long as everything goes into it, it's fine. I don't know why it's oh, fine. Oh, that's but, great. Yeah. It falls under the same form. It's because it's the same action being redone. <laughs> Yeah, we really don't know where this goes. <laughs> I really just I want to reiterate that for everyone. We should go on Anyways. a field trip one day. Maybe if this doesn't work out, we can't get back home. We'll just hop in there. But there, there is the chance that it's just a random point in space. So that's fine. I've been in worse places. Seattle. <laughs> Seattle. Re recently. <laughs> The vacuum of space has nothing on Seattle. Yeah. <laughs> no, trust me. The people that live there are annoying. How, how, how do you drink that much coffee? You know, at least in space. I don't have to worry about that. I you don't have to worry about one anything. One more Microsoft, bro. I'm going to lose it. <laughs> I'm going mean, to lose it. Yeah, I'm an oh, Apple legit. user. <laughs> oh, dude. All right. What do you all, all right. want to do? Let's go explore this horrible secret base that's going to have a bunch of mushroom people in it. Um, before we go into any buildings with bioweapons in them, Clarissa's putting on a mask. <laughs> oh yeah, we have, mask. we have like, we probably have like full PPE. That would be like For standard sure. gear. I For assume. Sure. So we'll put that on because I almost just got infected with something horrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. All right. I like that. I like that. Uh, well, then, uh, if it comes to in infection stuff, um, we'll get an we'll, extra we'll, die. We'll give you a die for that, for the gear and, and requisitions. Um, what are you doing? What are you exploring? It is uh, silent. But it doesn't look like abandoned, right? Like, it looks pretty. It looks recent. <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't look like anybody's here. Hate that. Hate it. All right. Um, so is there's like buildings on premises? Yeah, I'm. I'm also loving this uh, eternal siren. Siren. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it, it's getting louder and and longer somehow. <laughs> It's getting closer, is what's happening. They're coming for downtown Clarissa. Milwaukee. So sorry, it's been getting closer for minutes now. <laughs> you don't understand how the streets run in Milwaukee, okay? There's a main street that runs parallel to the river, so it curves through all of downtown. So I'll just get like a radius of like a siren just slowly circling all of downtown Milwaukee. <sighs> Sounds like a really bad what? city skylines experiment. <laughs> <laughs> we built a city on a swamp. What do you want from me? I don't. <laughs> uh, what? Uh, what was your question? Oh, where were were there buildings? There are like buildings on premises. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so just check out the closest one. I guess just kind of yeah, yeah. Start looking. Um, let's um. Why don't we go ahead and get a let's get a clue? Seems like we're we're trying to find some clues. So I'll use uh, my retrocognition. 
Oh, oh nice. Especially yeah. for the area. Yeah. Perfect time for that. Perfect time for that. Um, let's, uh, are you following up your directives? I think absolutely. Yes. Um, it, does your background come into play? Uh, I, I think, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then I don't know if you have gear that's specifically helping you with no. the, like searching, but you do have the paranormal power. The paranormal power. So, so three dice. mark that resonance and roll your three dice. Uh, five and two ones. Okay, so a five. Oh, I should have said, um, uh, I think it's still risky. Oh, well, uh, yeah, no, I think it's risky. Um, hmm. I think it's risky. I was debating whether to get have it be safe, but I still think there's a there's a pretty decent there's element of risk. risk. Yeah, yeah, there's a pretty inherent risk involved in this. Um, but a five means that you you do it, so you're going to get a, a clue, and there is still a consequence. Um, yeah, I here's what it is. You uh, see, in the past, you see that this area it was much smaller um and then you see uh sas uh rep members uh agents um are training in this small area and and as as the time passes uh as the war continues more training more sas agents are needed and so they start uh chopping down the trees at the edge of the forest to expand this SAS training ground. And your vision is uh, shunted back into the present when you hear and movement coming from the building that you are walking towards as the door bursts down and about six mushroom fungus creatures just split out and start running towards the four of you. And we will see how you decide to deal with that <gasps> next week. Uh, that's so evil <laughs> get used to it that's how i roll things i love a good cliffhanger <laughs> but i think we're we're getting i can feel it you guys are close you guys are close to solving and and containing this this paranormal phenomena uh which means that we're gonna have to do the theorize roll next time and uh mm -hmm. i'm having fun this is a fun one this is a fun little, mm -hmm. little it's so paranormal I mystery. love this one. I knew you were uh, going to bring out the mushroom zombies. I'm just... I was, I, you know what's funny? <laughs> I, 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 it was when you said it. I was like, oh, yeah, that's, oh, that's great. <laughs> Don't that's tell really me I'm the creator of my own demise. <laughs> Don't tell me that. <laughs> I just love the, the, the image of us all walking in while Big Mama has bloody fingernails. Oh, it's, it's like, like bandaged. It's yeah, bleeding yeah. still. <laughs> it's like really red. Yeah. Oh man! Well, uh, thank you so much for hanging out with us as we play External Containment Bureau. I'm having fun, and I hope you're having fun with us as well too. Uh, we'll see you next week. Bye. 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 Oi, 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 governor. <laughs>